What's going on my friends? I am Dustin Stelzer with Electrician U and today we are going to talk about all the different kinds of three-way switching that can be wired. Okay, so I think the best thing to do is to cover each one of these one at a time. So the first thing I'm gonna cover, and I've covered this in, in depth in other videos, so I'm gonna kinda just fly through it. Um, so a typical three-way, like a, a typical three-way, is where we have, uh, this is our hot, we have an incoming hot that goes to the switch, and we also have an incoming neutral that comes into uh, a switch box. This is what we would call our hot side of a three-way. This is what we would call our leg side of a three-way. The other side of the three-way, why, why we call it a leg side, is because from this side, the switch leg leaves and goes up to the light. And then the switch neutral comes into the neutral box. So we've got the hot and neutral incoming to one switch, and then on the other side, out in the garage, wherever this other light is, um, we've got the switch leg, hot and neutral, hot side, leg side. This is a typical three-way setup. So then what we would do is go uh, one traveler over to one side of uh, this device, another traveler over to the other side of this device. So the two gold screws are where our travelers go. And then the black screw is our common terminal on both of these, there's a black. Um, the incoming power goes to one of the black, the leg goes to the other one. That's pretty easy. Now, the cool thing about this setup is we have this incoming neutral here. When we run our travelers, we end up running another neutral to this box. So we have uh, a place for our neutrals to get wire nutted together. This is a wire nut. So we have a path through both devices up into the light, path on neutral all the way back, um, and then back to our panel. Very easy. That's how a normal three-way works. All right, the first three-way, uh, alternate three-way wiring method that we're gonna talk about is the Carter or Chicago three-way. The Carter three-way is an old school three-way outlawed in the 20s and most oftenly called a Chicago three-way as well. So the theory behind this is that we bring a hot to a plug nearby, right? And then we go from this plug and instead of going to the common terminal like we would on a normal three-way, we bring it over to a traveler. So we have our hot on one traveler, then we have that same hot that goes to another traveler and then keeps going down the line on a plug. So our traveler path is actually a hot path. Um, so that's the first like weird thing. Then we would go from our panel and we'd have our neutral and we would do the same thing. We would come to our next traveler and make our traveler a neutral the whole way. And then we would leave and go to the next plug. So our travelers are our hot and neutral in this whole setup. That's the weird thing about it, right? So then the common terminal is what switches this light bulb. So we have a common that goes to the hot side of the light bulb, and then we've got a common that goes to the neutral side of the light bulb. Um, so our common though goes through the light bulb. So then when we've got a light bulb, why this is as dangerous as it is, We've got a light bulb and we've got this like screw shell thing, right? Ooh, pretty light bulb. Well, the bottom of the light bulb is always a piece of metal. That's what we hook our hots up to. And the neutral is the screw shell. It's always supposed to be that way. Neutral, hot. What this does is every time you switch, it alternates and reverses the polarity of the light bulb. So it feeds a hot in neutral out when it's flipped in one situation. And when it's flipped the other way, it brings the neutral as hot and the hot side of the light bulb as the neutral. So it just reverses polarity of that screw shell. And per code, we have this whole screw shell issue where you can't uh, have the screw shell portion be hot. 
So this is illegal, it's banned, you're not supposed to do this, but you'll still notice in houses in the 40s and 50s and stuff like that, you'll still come across one of these weird setups, um, especially if the home is still on knob and tube wiring. For those of you that are new to this whole electrical experience, did you know that there's a thing called a four-way switch and that a four-way switch can switch multiple different locations? So a three-way switch doesn't have anything to do with the number of locations that you're switching from, you would think, right? Like a three-way switch means that like one over there, one over there, and another over there. It's not talking about the locations, it's talking about the device itself and how many terminals it has for how many different conductors or ways through this device current can flow. So if we have a three-way, we have a common screw. That is one way, usually it's your incoming hot or your leg going out. And the other two screws are your other two ways that current can leave or come into the device. Those are your travelers. So a four-way switch actually has four ways. There's four terminals. There's two incoming and two outgoing on every four-way. Now, some people would be like, okay, so what if you wanted to add more? Is there like a five-way and a six-way? No, it's not necessary. With a four-way switch, that one device will uh, allow you to put as many switches anywhere throughout a building. You can just like infinitely increase the amount that you're putting. 17 doorways, doesn't matter, but you only ever need a four-way for all of those locations. All right, the next uh, alternative three-way wiring method that we're gonna talk about is the California three-way. So California three-way, also known as the Hollywood three-way, the Coast three-way, West Coast three-way, um, but this is a very similar three-way to the Carter three-way, except that it doesn't reverse the polarity of the light bulb, which is kind of the cool thing. Now, this isn't like, wasn't made to replace the Carter three-way in any way. This is a completely different situation. There were codes at the time in LA, well, and just in parts of California, local codes where if you were running certain types of conduit, you couldn't have more than uh, three conductors in that conduit. So they're like, okay, well, we have two travelers. We have a hot neutral switch. Like we have five conductors plus a ground. Like how do we make this work with a rule that says we can only have three conductors in a conduit? You can't really carry things through. So they've got a little, uh, they got a little creative with this limitation. And this is what a California three way is. All right. So, uh, similarly to a, uh, Carter, you know, we're going to have our hot that goes to, uh, to like maybe our first device. And then we're going to have a hot that goes to a traveler. And we're going to have a hot that goes to another traveler. Then we're going to have our other traveler from a uh, traveler terminal to this traveler to the light bulb. And then, um, uh, we're gonna have from our screw shell of our light fixture, we're gonna have our neutral, but the neutral uh, just goes back to the panel or it can hit this neutral, and go back to the panel. And then the last thing we've got is the commons tied together. And then the last thing we can take our hot and go to the actual device and that gives us a way to continue our circuit wiring through the rest of the room. So hot in carries our hot through to the travelers and also to the next device that just keeps the hot going. We've got our neutral that feeds through everything, bypasses all of this. So there's no way for the neutral to be switched on anything and still passes it through the circuit. The commons are just tied together. So in one position, uh, it's going to allow this incoming current to go through the common and either get stopped and not go anywhere, or it's going to allow it to keep uh, going through to the light bulb itself. Um, but the two travelers themselves are always, one, one of them's always going to be hot. Um, the other one's always going to have the leg on it. So it's just a matter of using the common terminals to switch back and forth whether or not the hots connect to the leg or not. So pretty uh, a pretty tricky setup or a pretty clever setup uh, to come across a solution for a really silly problem to have. Um, so these are not used anymore typically either, but you will run into them from time to time. Um, most of the time, because of this setup, it allows people to not have to bring a neutral into one of the switch boxes. So uh, there's new code now that says that every location, every switch location <clears throat> 
has to have a neutral in it. There are some exceptions for three ways and four way switches as well. But uh, typically a California three way are not allowed. There are a lot of places like here in Austin where inspectors are like, I don't care what it says, we want a neutral at every single location. So to pass an inspection, you still have to do it, whatever they say. But um, anyways, this is the California three way. Do we need to put a neutral at every switch location now? This is something that's argued about in every kind of forum and Facebook group out there by a bunch of people that are not citing code. They're just going off of what somebody said one time somewhere. Um, so let's see what the actual code talks about for this whole uh, neutral issue. So we're gonna be in switches. This is article 404, specifically 404.2 uh, A and C. So 404.2 switch connections. On A, it says three-way and four-way switches. Three-way and four-way switches shall be wired so that all switching is done only in the ungrounded circuit conductor. Now, that doesn't specify color, it just specifies which conductor. You could essentially have uh, re-identified a white conductor and that is now your ungrounded conductor. It doesn't specify um, color, but the grounded conductor is supposed to be certain colors in other parts of code. So I guess it's arguable that you're supposed to not use the white conductor. So it goes on to say where in metal raceways or metal armored cables, wiring between switches and outlets shall be in accordance with 300.20A. That really just talks about um, ferrous raceways and like grouping of conductors and then, um, heating because of induction. There is an exception that says switch loops shall not require a grounded conductor. So a lot of people say it's illegal. You can't use switch loops. You can't run a hot down to a switch and then use the white conductor, you know, for a, a switch leg or vice versa, whatever your argument is. But it specifically says right here, switch loops shall not require a grounded conductor. So that means that they are at least understanding that switch loops are okay. They don't, they can be used. So the argument though is nowadays there's electronic switches that get put in walls and so if you go to put an electronic switch in and there's no neutral available in that box some of these devices won't work and so you have to try to figure out how the heck to get a neutral down to that location this has pissed enough people off because they've come across it because the wiring methods from the you know 50s 60s 70s all had switch loops all over the place um, so the way to get around that is every code cycle for the last few has been saying all right in 2020 we're gonna have this thing where we're gonna start requiring everybody to make sure that there's a neutral at switch locations. But it's not every switch location. There's a whole bunch of different places where you don't have to do it. And it's really just comes down to the ability for the circuit to be added to. If you can get a neutral to a switch location at a later date, then you don't have to worry about it. So if we go through on C, it says switches controlling lighting loads, the grounded circuit conductor, the neutral, for the controlled lighting circuit shall be installed at the locations where switches controlling lighting loads that are supplied by a grounded general purpose branch circuit serving bathrooms, hallways, stairways, and habitable rooms or occupiable spaces as defined in the applicable building code where multiple switch locations control the same lighting load such that the entire floor area of the room or space is visible from the single or combined switch locations. A grounded circuit conductor shall be only required at one location. So if we're talking about three-way switches, you only have to have a neutral at one of those locations. If you're talking four-way switches, you've got 17 different switches that all control this one light in the center of a room. Only one of them has to have that because you're only gonna have a dimmer at one location. So as long as you can put a dimmer at one location, a really fancy dimmer that needs a neutral, again, not every one of them is going to need a neutral, but if you do, you at least have one location amongst all of them uh, that do. So you do not have to jump neutrals to every single one of the locations. Anybody that says that in a Facebook group is wrong. <laughs> uh, for real, people need to be citing their sources. Like, holy crap, dude. The amount of people that are just spouting out random code that's not true. I think it's the majority. I would say 75% of, of electricians that are out talking about what code is what don't cite sources and they're wrong. Um, God, it gets confusing. So anytime you're having a debate or you're having some kind of literary discourse about this literary document. This is not literature. Uh, referential discourse over this reference material. Cite your damn sources. You don't have an argument to stand on if you're not citing your sources. Um, okay, a grounded conductor shall not be required to be installed at light switches, uh, light switch locations under any of the following circumstances. 
So we got five different things. I'm not gonna sit and read all of them, but there's different things like uh, if you can pull a neutral through a conduit later and add it, then you don't have to worry about having it. Um, things like that. So there's just different environments where there are some exceptions to the rule where you don't have to have a neutral. And then at the bottom, there is another exception that lets you know how many of uh, electronic switches that you can have on any feeder or branch circuit. And that's pretty much it. So uh, this whole issue, if you have to have neutrals at switches or not, you are supposed to put neutrals at switches, at all switches from here on out, with exception if there's multiple switches that control the same thing, three ways and four ways, or if you have a certain setup at a switch where you could get a neutral to it later. One of the things in here says like, you don't have to do it if it requires you to like rip up sheetrock. You don't have to knock holes in your walls just to be able to get a neutral somewhere. Like that's okay. So you can go through C, read through all of the uh, one through five as well as the exceptions to learn a little bit more about that. But that's what code says about the whole neutral issue. All right, so the last thing we're gonna talk about is the dead end three way. And this is a little bit different setup. This is, what I used to call a California three-way. And a lot of people that I've worked with have called a California three-way as well because it still only deals with three conductors. But that's not technically accurate because a, a true California three-way still carries the circuit. It's kind of like a traveling bus three-way where it allows the, the, the continuation of the hot and neutral throughout the rest of the circuit, whereas a dead-end three-way does not. That's the limitation of it. So that's why you need to know that it's different than a Cali. So what we would have is um, typically we're still gonna have a hot side and a leg side of these three ways where we have our incoming hot and then a leg that goes out to a light. Oh, I should probably draw the light. So what we're gonna have coming into the first box, we're gonna have um, our hot coming in and our incoming hot is still gonna go to our common terminal and then we're going to have uh, our incoming neutral as well into that same box. And then from the light fixture itself, we're going to have a piece of 12-2 coming down. So we're going to have the switch leg that comes into this box. And we're going to have the, the neutral that goes with the switch leg. So we've got neutral, hot, well, still neutral uh, from the light fixture and the switch leg, all of that in the same box. There's nothing on the other side. So this would probably be a situation where somebody had just a light switch and they're like, dang it, we want to add another light switch on the other end of the hall, but you don't want to have to like run all of these different wires over the other end to rewire this thing. You could just run a piece of 12-3 over to the other side of the room and give the three conductors it needs for a three-way to work. So you would bring two travelers over there and you would bring this leg over there by wire nutting it inside of this box and just turning it into a different conductor in between. So if we were to run a piece of 12-3 over there, then we would have one of our travelers. This would be your other black conductor in your 12-3. And then the last conductor that you would have would be, uh, I wish I had a white. <laughs> the other conductor that you would have would be taking this and wire nutting it, taking this, uh, the hot side of your switch leg and sending that over to the last screw, to the common screw. So you're interrupting it in this box. You're putting a wire nut on it. This is probably going to be your white conductor that you're going to re-identify as black inside of the box, but you're just sending that leg over there and you're sending two travelers over there. So now everything happens inside of this box. It sends power over, sends it back and then goes up to the light. And when you cut power out, everything works the same way. The only problem with doing that is when you sent those three conductors over here, your black, your red and your uh, white that's now re-identified as black, you don't have any neutral over here and you don't have a constant hot because your travelers are always switching and your common is only a switch leg now. So you don't have any constant hot or neutral over here to keep carrying on down the circuit and going. So that's the kind of problem of a dead end three way. Um, but there's nothing wrong with doing dead end three ways. Uh, there's places where you're going to get into trouble in code where you're re-identifying a conductor that's less than you know, number eight, any conductors that are small enough need to actually be the, the, the color of those wires, not field identified. 
but if you get up to conductors of a certain size, you can field identify. That's not a code that a lot of inspectors really care about, honestly. Um, as long as you're doing the due diligence of re-identifying a conductor, I think a lot of inspectors are okay with that still. Just depends on your area though. Some are very, very strict to adherence to the code as well. So you may not be able to re-identify. So you may run into a situation where this is not okay. Another thing too, this doesn't give you a neutral in the other side of the switch box, which again, the exceptions in code, you shouldn't have to have a neutral in every one of the locations if you're in a three-way or a four-way setup. But some jurisdictions, they may want you to carry one anyways, just so there's the flexibility of future whatever, being able to add switches and do whatever you want, lighting control systems, just making sure there's a neutral everywhere. And you can't do that with this setup. So that's why a lot of municipalities will say, no Cali's, no dead ends, no Carter's, none of that shit, just like a regular, true to fashion, neutral and hot carried through, uh, traveling bus if you will that just means you're taking the bus from the panel and you're traveling it you're bringing it through the entire circuit um but they want like a standard three-way setup for everything so i hope that helps all of you uh there's a lot of people that call a lot of these things different things and they just get confused on terms and so i figured there should be something that actually shows all of the different ones and how they're wired and what the differences are so let me know if you guys have any comments, questions, things below. There's actually other names if you've heard things. I think there's like a farmer three-way. There's all kinds of like silly things that people call these. So um, put your comments below. Let me know if there's anything that I missed or anything that you think that I should cover. Uh, thank you guys for watching. Best can't use it and video.